Uh, good morning. I am Rajkopal Srinivasan. I am part of TCS Research, where I head up the life sciences research area. Uh, this morning, uh, we have Professor Vaskar Saha, uh, who is a world-renowned uh, researcher in pediatric oncology. Uh, he is ba- he has a dual appointment. Uh, he works at the University of Manchester in the Division of Cancer Sciences as a professor of pediatric oncology, but also he is a director of the Tata. Transnational Cancer Research Center at the Tata Medical Center in Kolkata, where he is also uh, the head of uh, pediatric uh, hematology and oncology. Uh, as a world-renowned researcher, he has numerous publications uh, to his name, and he has also made certain very fundamental contributions in improving how uh, pediatric cancers are treated in India. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you today. Uh, to this uh, conversation, Professor Saha, welcome. Thank you, Raj. Thank you for your kind words. Yeah. Uh, so I, I find it interesting that you spend uh, time between two different institutions, separated by continents, and you do this on a regular basis. It's, it's not like you spend uh, six months while at one location and six months at another. You're constantly traveling back and forth. Uh, in order to do that, that must really there must be a very uh, uh, very important motivating factor that drives you to do that. I'd like to hear about what is it, what it is that motivated you to even engage in such a uh, process. Yeah, I, I think the science is about the sharing knowledge, and uh, it is about the public duty that what we find as researchers must benefit everybody. And I think that uh, the uh, big question here is that in India, uh, patients, even with the most curable cancers, the outcomes lag 10 to 20 percent behind the, what has been achieved in the West. And the reasons for this are not quite clear. See, we have good hospitals. We have, you know, excellently highly skilled staff. And uh, these days, uh, patients are able to tap into resources from both government and non-governmental agencies to afford treatment. So to really understand why we lag behind, we need really good, high-quality data uh, to understand these mitigating factors. And as um, you, know, you said, you know, I'm a pediatric researcher, so I have focused on two cancers at the Tata Medical Center, uh, which is one is childhood acute lymphoblastic leukemia. This is the most common cancer of childhood worldwide, and outcomes right, right. are more than 90% in the West. But at our best centers in India, this has stagnated between 60 to 75% in the last three decades. Oh. And common to all of these centers is that treatment-related deaths, you know, are between 15 to 25 percent. So that was the first mm-hmm. cancer. And the second cancer we are focused on, which is out of my comfort zone, but I think is a real need, is gallbladder cancer. So this is a very rare cancer in the West. But mm-hmm. in the north and northeast of in, and east of India, where I work, it has among the highest incidences in the world. And very little is known about it. Very little treatment options have been developed because of its rarity. And the outcomes are really poor. And the average life expectancy can be around six months. So this is really the two questions we're trying to answer. Oh, that, that's very interesting. So you have essentially two problems. One, where there's a lot of work available from uh, the West, uh, which can now be better adapted streamlined for Indian conditions and something that is not of much interest in the West because of the rarity of the cancer itself and where we really have to come up with our own solutions. So in that sense, uh, the two different problems really uh, in some sense are two, uh, two extremes of uh, <laughs> and so you're trying to address both of those and potentially probably everything in between. Uh, so that's, that's very interesting. See, one of the things that I, I would like to talk to you about uh, in the context is that uh, these are really very interesting times in terms of cancer treatments. There are numerous newer technologies that have come up. Uh, so there is a lot of excitement over being able to use DNA editing to cure, cure certain type of blood cancers. There is also a lot of excitement over the whole immunotherapy approach uh, to curing cancers and so on. 
A lot of this has really been enabled by the fact that we can do very precise molecular measurements uh, at a very detailed level. But over and above that, it is also the, uh, the kinds of patient data that we are able to collect, uh, especially over long periods of time. And so a lot of computation and very many newer approaches to making sense of data using uh, various forms of machine learning seem to have contributed to this. One of the fundamental things about being able to do this then is to have some very robust, clean, trustworthy data. And that has typically not been available in uh, India. So in terms, when you approach this problem here in India, how are you going about uh, that process of making sure that you have the right data that is trustworthy and reliable and so on. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely spot on. You know, the devil is always in the detail and, you know, it is pinpointing this. And I think that what you um, said and was really that, you know, that even within the same tumor type, there is considerable genetic heterogeneity, uh, which actually influences how a patient will respond to treatment. And each person also has a variation in how kind of toxicities they actually will get from treatment. So to be able to then pinpoint, you know, who is going to relapse and who is going to have excess toxicity, you need a large data set, okay? To be able to do that, you should be you what is actually the only real way to do this is to treat all patients uniformly in a clinical trial because then we can obtain data by consent okay and this is very important so right. this is this is actually the heart of the tata translational cancer research center and the core of our partnership with tata uh, consultancy services because we realized right in the beginning that unless we had very robust ways of collecting data, curating this data, knowing the validity of this data, and developing the analytical tools, all this effort would go in vain. And so right from the beginning, this partnership with Tata Consultancy Services has allowed us to develop these kind of electronic tools to capture data. So for acute lymphoblastic leukemia or ALL, as we discussed earlier, we have partnered with the National Cancer Grid, Indian Council of Medical Research, and five different pediatric cancer centers around India to first develop a systemic approach to how children with ALL are treated. Our consultancy service has built a bespoke, fairly novel customized clinical trial management system, which allows us to collect, curate, and look at any inconsistencies data in real time. Okay, as you put in the data, there are validities and checks. So we can check and say, okay, there is something wrong here and we can do this. And this has allowed us over the period of partnership to collect data for over 5,000 children. So this is a large right. set of data, okay? The kind of data that you need to do to be able to crunch the numbers. And along with that, the Tata, the Tata Medical Center has an electronic medical record system, which Tata Consultancy Services built. And what Tata Consultancy Services has done is develop national language, uh, natural language processing tools, which allows us to mine the data from that as well uh, to help us analyze. And we're using this for both acute lymphoblastic leukemia and gallbladder cancer. And as a result, over a period of time, so this requires patience, uh, requires early planning, but we now have a large data set, which is of high quality. Excellent. And I hear you loud and clear when you say, Need a lot of patience <laughs> uh, because <laughs> there's a lot of effort involved in getting all of these things uh, in the form and shape that they need to be. So you you did say that the mortality came down to about six percent, and uh, the treatment outcomes have been uh, are approaching what you see in the West. Uh, in the course, of, but in the course of this uh, study, you're also collecting uh, some uh, genomic data. And you're trying to also develop methods that are suited for India in terms of how do you treat that set of patients who don't respond well. Is there anything you'd like to tell us about how that whole process has been and uh, what, if anything, has come out? I realize it's very early days in terms of being able to say something concrete. Uh, but uh, what has the general uh, outcomes been from the uh, research that uh, you're doing?
Yeah, as you said, it's early days, but we have some good indications. Uh, we set out to say that why are our patients not doing as well in, as in the West? Okay, and actually, from the high quality data that has been curated and the analytical tools that we have developed along with Tata Consultancy, consultancy Services, we have identified a, a number of uh, issues. So, working with uh, TCS laboratories in Noida and in Hyderabad, we have identified that there are some unique genetic variants in our patients which influence toxicity and outcomes. And we are now processing to develop a rapid point of care tests which will allow us to identify and tailor these therapies in the future. Additionally, we have also identified that some of the drugs that we have in India are actually of suboptimal quality. And clearly, as you can understand, that means that you're not giving the patient the, the right amount of medicine, there will be an increased relapse rates. And right. we have been privileged to work with some innovative pharma companies to develop a new generation of drugs that we believe will help not just patients in India, but patients worldwide. We're also working with international partners. One of the advantages of, as you said, of zipping between the continents and meeting people who are also interested in what we do to develop a highly sensitive next generation tests which are cost effective and point of care which will allow us to track the response to treatment so patients who are not having the optimal response to treatment and really at molecular level we can change therapies and to prevent relapse so that's a that's another one and then with in the clinic, if you think of it, the clinician nowadays in the outpatient clinic has a barrage of data coming through. Okay, So they only see what they recognize. And we're working with Tata Consultancy Services to develop machine learning tools which will automate and support the clinician in, make, in delivering decision support okay, to the patient. Right. So that will allow optimization and tailoring of therapy in the clinic itself rather than just done in the inpatient setting. And finally, our re latest adventure has been uh, what we are trying to do is, okay, if you have a patient who is not responding to therapy, what therapy should you give them? Okay, And we have now developed high throughput microscopy and imaging, which is one of the things we were talking about, imaging data, uh, which allows us to predict which drugs the patient might respond to. And we are now actually treating patients with the drugs that have been predicted. And again, we are working with Tata Consultancy Services to use artificial intelligence and machine learning tools to automate this whole decision process. So in future, we will be able to deliver this as a diagnostic facility, which will be automated and delivered to the clinician and saying, this is the prediction of what your patient is finding and to respond to. So yes, many things going forward from what we've already achieved. Excellent. All of this sounds really very exciting that uh, we are at the forefront of uh, addressing many of the issues around cancer treatment and uh, recovery and so on. Uh, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about uh, for some details on what you're doing in the gallbladder cancer area. Uh, specifically, what are the challenges you see in that, uh, given especially the paucity of data and uh, treatments from uh, other countries and where we are engaged in essentially coming up with uh, a very new novel approach uh, on our own? Yeah, so the gallbladder cancer is quite puzzling uh, because why is it that we have such a high incidence in the north and northeast of India? Okay, And most of our understanding of how cancer occurs and how to treat cancers come from laboratory-based models. And there are actually no models for gallbladder cancer. And because uh, Tata Translational Cancer Research Center is embedded within the Tata Medical Center, we have ready access to patients and tissue coming from patients. And so this is a collaboration with the surgeons at Tata Medical Center, the radiologists, the medical oncologists. So again, the same process, we are getting good clinical data and we're able to obtain samples from the patients. And what we are developing or have developed at uh, TTCRC is what we call our organoid models. So these are new generations, very new technique. We're able to grow mini organs from the patient and these mini organs resemble the organ from which they were taken from. And this will allow us from the normal gallbladder to test and see what are the factors that are leading to this gallbladder cancer. And taking the gallbladder cancers themselves, what we talked about earlier was this high throughput drug screening system. We can take these organoids onto the 
this and say, okay, what are the drugs that are available that we might be able to treat patients with gallbladder cancer? So this is early days yet, but it's actually fairly novel and cutting edge technology. And we think that this is a this is a cancer, rare cancer, but a, it's a neglected cancer and a cancer of great need. And so we are very pleased that we may be able to contribute something that will directly benefit our patients in India. And as you said, find our own solutions because these solutions don't exist in the West. Right. So uh, I have to say that it's been a, a privilege and a pleasure to have been engaged with research with uh, TTCRC and with you in particular for the last uh, over four four years, closer to five years, I think, and we've uh, we've come up with some nice discoveries, and I think there are ma many more such discoveries to be made. What is your sense been about this entire uh, collaboration that we've had between uh, TTCRC, the Tata Translational Cancer Research Center, and TCS, and where do you see that going in the future? Though, if you look at our mission statement on our website, we have said right from the beginning that we, uh, our vision for TTCRC is a center where members from the clinical team, the research team, and from industry can work together to find solutions for our patients. Each group brings in different skills and different techniques, and this is what we have planned right from the start. Thank you so much for making time this morning. To, uh, to talk to us. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> My pleasure too. Thank you so much.